Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. These are the best lessons in Isaiah, teaching about Christ and all of the prophecies of his death, burial, and even resurrection and his birth. These are, he said in Exodus 3, 13 through 15, I am that I am. This is my name forever. The creator of this universe calls himself the God of Israel 789 times. The second coming of Christ is what we're going to be learning in these lessons. But by the time we go through all the 66 chapters, we're going to learn more about Christ than any other book except in the Psalms. Isaiah beheld his personal, visible, and glorious coming in majesty and glory. I hope you are looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember, this is a heavenly, divine message. So these are the predictions of the glory of Christ. The messianic predictions reveal his exaltation and his glorious second coming. Isaiah 24 verse 16 through 21. I will just read Isaiah 24, 23 now. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. You see, we do not today understand all of the glorious things he has prepared for Israel, for Jerusalem, and for all the saints of God, all the saints of God. And in Isaiah 24, 19 and 20, the earth shall reel true and fro like a drunkard, and it shall fall and not rise again. Now, this is the tribulation period that we're talking about. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. But all of these glories are future. In that day, Isaiah, the phrase, in that day, 45 times is in the book of Isaiah. This day is the day when Jehovah is manifested and when he deals in judgment with the earth. Oh, the glories that he has for all of us. And when he's dealing with the earth, we are going to be in heaven. We're not going to be on this earth. Every true believer can look for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we're learning in these lessons. And the glory that he has for us, we can never explain because he said, I have not seen nor ear heard the glories he has for us. Let's pray. Oh, gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come before thee today once again to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. Today, we have the greatest need the world has ever known. And we're coming into the holiest by the blood with a true heart and full assurance of faith. And we're asking for 100 fold because in these last days, we must seek Christ. Nothing else will work. Nothing else will give us eternal life but Christ and his shed blood. He hath washed us from our sins in his own blood. We're praying for 100 fold of every person that's listening today 
and each member of your family will be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. If you claim these promises and believe every word and not have any doubt, because these words are pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. Not one word can fail because this is the living word. And this is the only book in the world that will keep us in these days in which we're living. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we're seeing in these lessons the glories of our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. The day, that day when Jehovah is manifested. Always remember that now. This is what's going to happen to those that do not receive Christ. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7. If we could just think about how terrible these things are, we would turn to Christ today because the only time you are sure of is right now. You have no hope of the next hour, the next minute. So this is in 2 Thessalonians. What he tells us is going to happen. Chapter 1, verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. This is 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. You need to read these scriptures, write them down, and give them out to people that you know that do not know Christ as Savior. And when he shall come, to be glorified in his saints. He's coming back to the earth, and we're coming back with him. This is something that you can claim today. 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 10. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints, and to be admired in all them that believe. You see, you have to believe this book. You cannot doubt and receive any good thing. Because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Today, can people see Christ in you? Or are you living like the world? If you are a child of God and we have his divine nature living in us, this body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And we are to present this body a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is his divine service. And be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by the spirit of our mind, that we may know the perfect will of God. And I pray all the time for 100 fold of every person that's listening. So you are in my prayers. And this is what he has for us. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Verse 12, that is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. Glorified. Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. In these last days, our light is to shine brighter and brighter. We're to walk in the light and have fellowship one with another. And then the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him, according to the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a message for every person. You know, the only hope of this world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. 
This is something that every person must know. And another thing that I can tell you, that my website is gloriousmessage.com. And you can also get my other website. And you can copy all of my videos that are on the website. Everything I have can be comp copied. So you can be a missionary also. You can teach others through these lessons. That's what God has done. He's opened the door for every person in the world to hear these truths. And I know all of you have someone that you know, maybe lots of people, that have never heard these truths. Copy them and use them to serve the Lord every day. And then we see the future glories and blessings in Isaiah is always connected with that day. The glories and blessings do not proceed that day, but that day precedes the glory and blessings promised. The storm clouds of divine judgment have swept over this earth. Then the Lord has been manifested. That's when we're coming back with him on white horses. Every one of us with our glorified body. This is what he has for every true believer. Isaiah 2, 6 through 3, 26. The chastisement and then the blessings. That's how God always works. He's perfect in all his ways and holy in all his works. So it was given to Isaiah to behold 700 years before the Son of God appeared on earth an almost complete picture of the sufferings of Christ and their vicarious character. How the obedient servant was to be treated by men. First mentioned in Isaiah 50 verse 6. I want you to learn. You're going to learn more about Christ than you've ever learned. And I want you to know how we are so undeserving that he has died instead of us. And listen at just this one thing. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair of his face. I hid not my face from shame and spitting, spit on someone as great as our God is and holy and the Son of God. He's always been deity, the Son of God. He had to become man to go to the cross and die. Deity is the only person we are to worship. We never worship man. We worship the true and living God. He is the Son of God. This is what every person must know when they hear these truths. The revelation of the suffering of Christ found in Isaiah 53. This is the center of that chapter. And listen what it says. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. I want every person that, to ch that this, these messages to change your life and to sit down and weep with joy for what he's done for us. This is what it does for me. And I know it will do the same thing for you. Isaiah 53, 13 through 15, Jehovah's servant marred, and afterwards exalted. Isaiah 52, I'm sorry, 13 through 15. Isaiah 53, the vicarious sacrifice of Christ, Jehovah's servant. Five progressive parts, the servant. He came to serve. And today, for every true believer, and this will bring tears to your eyes, and it's hard for me to say it without it. 
He's our great high priest today in heaven. He's still serving us night and day as our advocate, as our mediator, and as our intercessor. That's why we come to the throne of grace, because our great high priest is merciful and faithful. He's touched with every need that we have. The suf his suffering and his exaltation so that nations are astonished at him and kings mouths shut. The keynote of the prediction that follows is Isaiah 53, 1 through 3. This is the most amazing story and as we hear very little about his sufferings. Why? Because this is the most wonderful, the most powerful message in the Gospels. And they teach the same thing as Isaiah. That's when he was on earth and these things were happening to him. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground, and hath no form nor comeliness. He hath, when he, we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. You think you are despised today and rejected? Our Savior that came from heaven, the Son of God, as a son of man, this is how he was treated. And when you're rejecting him today, you're rejecting the only person that can get you to heaven. It's all about Christ. Everything here is about him. This is what brings people to the Lord, is to hear all that he's done. Isaiah 1 through 53, 1 through 3, his life and his rejection by the nation of Israel. Isaiah 53, 4 through 6, his suffering, smitten, afflicted, wounded, and bruised. Verse 4, surely he hath bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Have you ever thought about someone loving you that much? And then you turn from him and reject him. And one of the Bible verses that we need to know is all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. All of our sins were laid on him. This is what the gospel means. This is the greatest truth that you will ever hear that the world does not know. That's why we're giving this out because the only hope of the world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. And right here, is the gospel. That means good news. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is the greatest gospel message of John three sixteen, And then we see 5 through 7, his submission and his deliverance. That's why he came from heaven. 
This is the most amazing story that anybody has ever heard, and very few people know it. Our neighbors, many of them, don't even know. I just read, showed you verse 8, verse 7, and verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Verse 7, listen at this one. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. You know when people hurt us, say cruel things, or do cruel things to us? If we love the Lord, nothing shall offend us. He's our example. There's not a person on earth that we can look to to live by except Him. Listen at verse 9. And He made His grave with the wicked and with the rich, and his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit found in his mouth. Doesn't this bring tears to our eyes? It has me, and I pray it will all of us. Then, verse 10 through 12, his glorious reward. Verse 10 through 12. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Think of that. His heavenly Father. It pleased him to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed and shall be satisfied. This is amazing. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. You see, he arose from the dead. It's always suffering and then blessing. He ascended back into heaven and was rewarded for his faithfulness. Have you ever asked the Lord, have you ever asked our Heavenly Father to be like Christ? Wouldn't you want to be the most obedient child of God in the world? Everything he did he came to do the will of his Father. He came to make known and manifest Christ. The Holy Spirit came to make known and manifest Christ. He came to make known and manifest his Father. That's what Christ came for. And the Holy Spirit came to make known and manifest Christ. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant, justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. How many people do you want to, re to receive Christ? Have you ever thought, why do I pray for a hundredfold? Because he suffered for you. I'm here because of him. You know, if Christ didn't exist, everything would cease to be. Verse 12, Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for those that were on the cross. And the one man on the cross said, We deserve our just punishment. He said to Christ, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He said, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. If you're suffering, right now is the time to call upon him, and he will save you. There's no religions. There are no denominations. It's all about Christ. You see, by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. That's how he's there as our great high priest today. And then we have in 
it a description of the servant, the vicarious sufferer, the trump, triumphant victor, as nowhere else in the Bible. The great statements are made concerning his work on the cross. I pray you will study these lessons with us and learn the sufferings of Christ. The first one, Isaiah 53, 4, He hath bore our griefs. The second one, Isaiah 53, 4, He's carried our sorrows. Every sin we'll ever commit. The crucifixion atones our sins. His resurrection eradicates them. He never remembers those again. I pray that you will do that right now. Get on your knees and thank God for this greatest person in the world. He is appointed heir of all things. He's possessor of heaven and earth today. And he's eternal. Only those things that are eternal are important. To know Christ is life's highest attainment. That's what the world needs. And I want to thank you for all that you're going to do with these videos.